Good morning, good life. Welcome back to Amy TV, where we come together to help you go after the life you want. Not my usual setup, and I'm sharing screen today with my dear, dear friend. No, scratch that, because I say that about literally everyone. This is my actual best friend, Sarah Mitchell McCain. Thanks for being here, Sarah. I thought you were gonna say Santa. No, Santa Mitchell McCain has joined us go. today. I thought it would just be fun for us to, while well, I'm building my first gingerbread house ever. Ooh, um, symbolism. <laughs> are you? How many have you made? Successfully? A at all. Attempt. Oh, I've made many. Okay. None have stayed standing. Okay, great, so. so that's the real goal here. Yeah, so I thought we could do that and have a fun little conversation about mm -hmm. something that I think is really interesting because it's something I've actually struggled with, if not for you. I don't know like how much I would be able to talk about this subject matter. Yeah. The idea of making friends, keeping friendships as an adult, You're especially well. now because I even moved away and everything. Still in denial about that. Yeah, I know yeah. you are. So we're anyway. building houses that are in the same area, just so I can oh, okay. pretend that you yeah. never moved. What's our inspiration? Where are yeah. we building these we're, houses? We're neighbors. <laughs> these gingerbread houses are neighbor houses, and they will stay standing. Got it, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, first I need to figure out what these things are. Uh -huh. So this is your piping, your piping icing tool. Okay, cool. So we're gonna fill it with the icing. Okay. Supposedly, it'll keep the walls of the house up, mm. in theory. Great. And you need to somehow use this thing. So I think we cut this. Okay. But like, how much do you know how I'm gonna cut? I just don't wanna mess it up. How much do you know what to well, cut? Well, what if we mess up one bag and then we share the Great other? Idea. Should Should that fail? Like friendship. We'll be here all night. So there's that. Okay. And then you put the ice in it. So yes, let's now we do yours. Okay, Well, cool. Or should we test that one work? Let's see if that one works. Now the fun part. Mm. Ooh. Okay, that's aggressive. Oh, see, aha! Ooh, okay, good. All right. Okay. Okay. We're getting somewhere. Are we ready to build a house now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Step one. Okay. You want the you want to build the walls first. I love how Sarah became the expert on this. <laughs> I have no idea what Again, I'm doing. Again, I've never kept one standing. <laughs> However, I feel like the roof or the roof, the roof needs to be the last part. Okay. So we have you have your back of house, you have your front of house. Got it. The and chimney goes in the front. Have, so you wanna take your sides. Okay. And I feel like we wanna get it to stand. How are we gonna do that? Okay, so this is where I never succeed. Okay. Um, <laughs> so this is where we fail. And you can put a lot of but icing. But we're failing forward. <laughs> At the end of the day, we still have icing, so candy, and just, cookies. So you just gotta start, you just gotta like start somewhere, right? Just ice something and stick a wall to yep, it. Yep, 100%. Okay. But the thing is, I think you gotta, you gotta hold the wall in place for a second. Cause you don't want it, like I think, uh, the does icing the wall doesn't... go on the outside or does, are you tucking it in like this? But see, I know when I let go of this wall. Really? Cause look, watch. Y'all, my first job was Dairy Queen. I'm gonna have this, okay? See, see look, <laughs> mine fell down. I taught you. You decided to become friends with me at some point in our. Uh... Was it not a mutual decision? Well, it was. It was mutual. Are you but... voluntold to be my friend? By you? Yeah. Oh. I'm this cursed. Is going great. Okay, I'm not gonna lie though. I have always had a a, a tough time with friendships. It goes back to school. I kind of bounced around a lot of schools. I had a very hard time, a lot of imposter syndrome on the whole people want to spend time with me thing. I think that's like an ongoing struggle in my mindset. Mm -hmm. And then Sarah came along. Um, she was just genuinely interested in me. And I was like, <laughs> But why? Like, I was a little skeptical, honestly. How long were you skeptical? Still skeptical? I was skeptical for years, to be honest. <laughs> we're, just we're just getting out of the skeptical. There got to be a point where Sarah said, you're my best friend. And I was like, are I don't believe sure? that. I, 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 you are also my best friend, but I fundamentally don't believe that. It took a long time for me to believe that I was actually your best friend because there was so much imposter syndrome. I feel that. like that is a true story. It is. And at the same time, I feel like in my own way, I was very hesitant to believe when you let me in because when we met. By the way, what is this? But where does it go? On like, top of the house. And I, I'm actually gonna um, be, I'm gonna oh, not okay. be friendly for a second. I'm gonna stop helping you because <laughs> your lines are so pretty and mine are not. And so like, I know, not that it's a competition, friendship's never a competition, but um, I realize I'm gonna fail. Wait, but my chimney look, okay, is look, in the way. Go like this, take both sides for a sec. You want to see, you want it to go on a roof. Okay, I, I got You want that your part house part to not part? get rained on. Oh, I think what we're supposed to do, I think we're supposed to break the chimney off and then reattach it. 
Why? I think. Why does Michael know this and I don't? My, my wait, wait. I'm cinematographer kinda, is fully aware of how to do this and kinda, he's laughing. I kind of think we should test on yours first. <laughs> no, of course you do. Oh. Do we have like a little chisel? See, like that. Look, you listened and you did. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Honey, okay. do you want the piping secret? Because I think I know it. When you are like, you know how you go to like the, the yogurt plate, the frozen yogurt and you like pump out the ice cream? You kind of have to like let it collect for a minute before you move on. You're not like drawing a line. It's like, it's like you're dotting. I'm telling you, I worked at Dairy Queen. I learned a lot about this. Before I aggressively entered your life and demanded we become friends, yeah, um, which is how you life. make it sound, I feel like I was so intimidated by you the night I met you. Why? Because you can be very reserved. Like oh, I think yeah, that's fair. we were in a social situation it's, where it, we uh, both uh, resting Grinch face. You mean? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, your resting Grinch face was on. I didn't know anyone there besides the person I was with. I just felt like I was drawn to have conversation with you. But I was. I also remember leaving that night and being like, "Me up, she hates me." Like I was like, <laughs> "Listen." And now you're getting artistic. No. Look at those little like. I'm <laughs> telling you, this <laughs> is <laughs> the <laughs> piping <laughs> secret. You know, like moving things into my house. <laughs> Here is my defense. Yeah. I do tend to have a little bit of resting Grinch face because I don't believe people actually want to talk to me that much. Mm -hmm. And I have that imposter syndrome and I feel like I have to present a lot of value and be live. And like, if I don't know you and I don't know the right questions, I've grown on that as I obviously been in business, learned a lot about like networking and just how to be genuinely interested in people. But initially it just always felt like, well, nobody in school really wanted to hang out or be friends. So I just never really thought I had life together on that, how to, how to build a friendship with someone. So it wasn't that I didn't like anyone that would talk to me. It was just, I don't know, I just didn't know how to marry the connection between meeting somebody and then carrying on into a further friendship from there. Other than like, oh, we run into each other at the same events or the same couples get together and those relationships just happen organically, but not with depth. Knowing you now and having all the conversations we have had, it makes sense. I just remember leaving that night and being like either a, I will never see her again. Or B, like, I will, and she didn't like me. And so, like, it never, like, I think when I flash forward, what, like, eight years later, if you had told Sarah that night, like, oh, she's gonna be a huge, significant person in her life, she's gonna be your daughter's godmother. Yeah. Like, I would have been like, Grinch face? <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, so I don't know what it was about maybe our second meeting that made, because I made me be like, no, let's keep talking. Like, and, I don't know, you became attached somehow. Yeah, well, cause you just keep coming around. I mean, can't <laughs> me, you know? That was nice for me because it was like, okay, you, you, you are so good at showing genuine interest. So I feel like that's the takeaway, right? You are so open with people and you learn about them and you ask the right, you ask a lot of questions actually. She asks a lot of questions, no. guys. Well, um, I do, sorry, that was a no towards the house. That's a, that's a, nod to Brad the Rad Dad. Um, oh, yeah. Brad the Rad Dad did teach me that. Brad taught you to ask questions. Sometimes I just don't text Sarah back because she asks me a deep question. I'm like, she clearly volleyballed this text to me and I can't handle answering this question right now. I'm gonna stew on it and then I will get back to her at a later time. Or I make you go to dinner with my dad. I don't like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's that, even dude. worse. Yeah. And then flash forward to you accepting the fact we were friends. And then I think the other milestone moment was um, when you made me maid of honor, but you didn't, you just, do you remember how, how that uh, happened? Yeah, I remember this one. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. a story. Oh, it was just a regular brunch. I don't remember. You said something like, well, you, you were engaged. Yes, we're engaged. We were talking about the wedding and you were saying something. I was asking you questions, which yeah, all were, tracks to what we were just talking about. Right, you were saying something along the lines of what you were going to be doing at the wedding or like in preparation for the wedding or something. Helping you with But something. it was just like something very friendship casual. And I just was like, well, don't you think you're gonna be really busy being maid of honor to do that? What? <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, yeah, you're a maid of honor. And I was like, was this a question? I was like, It was oh. just a fact. I was like, well, I thought you knew. Um. <laughs> Did you not get my memo? <laughs> and that to me, I think, was the tipping point where similar to like when I was like, you're my best friend. It's just like a fact. Yeah. It's a, That's pretty And you thought it could be <laughs> unspoken. Um, I don't know if I ever accepted it. Uh, I was, but you know. It, yeah, that pretty much speaks to how I, um, how I, put effort into my friendships apparently. I mean, it's kind of my favorite way that you could have ever asked me. Just you like... just kind of made it a fact. So listen, one could make a metaphor with a house. Okay. You need a solid foundation. Yeah. You need some walls. 
You know, you need a roof over your head. One could argue that's like a friendship. Yeah. A friendship needs a solid foundation. Okay. So what is the foundation made of? Of our friendship or any friendship? Any friendship. Like, what do you think is valuable? Mm. How, how do you know you're onto something with someone and that they are becoming like a next level friend in your life that you should, you know, maybe express some vulnerability Why? to? <laughs> I just want to hold on to mine, make sure that doesn't happen. Here I want to hit your <laughs> to help me with mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cursed. I still have hope. Rick tried to really the, I the don't. Bulbs? Do okay. we have tape for Sarah? <laughs> yep. That'd be great. Thanks. <laughs> Foundational things to friendship. No judgment. No judgment. Based on you're not judging my lack of ability to build a house. My number one thing is honesty. Mm -hmm. Transparency. And I think that's why I was so drawn to you right away cuz you are a straight shooter. Like it like as much as you were reserved, I knew you weren't gonna sell me a bill of goods. Like you yeah. told it like it was, and I appreciated that. And that's like the one thing. Like I can tell when people are lying. I can tell when people are fudging the truth, and I, I just can't. Yeah. I can't with that. Yeah. I don't care if what you're telling me is good or bad. Just be honest. Yeah, I agree. Okay. That's why so many friendships I don't think go very deep because there is so much surface levelness that ends up happening. And also these days it's like, you can't get anyone's undivided attention anymore. It's nope. like everyone's staring at their phone all the time and I can appreciate the usage of the phone because it's done so much for me in so many different ways. Let me ask you this, when was the last time you saw me looking at my phone while I was at your house? I was gonna say the same thing of, when was the last time we even took a picture together? I am so notoriously bad at that. Like we don't, like, cause every time we do the BFF chat, you're like, text me a picture of us. Like I have all pictures of, of pictures you with Grace, so I have pictures of you with like my dog, but we don't take, and we that's talk like, so we, much that we don't yeah. even, like, what are we gonna take a selfie of? Like, we genuinely are so interested in just, like, catching up and being in the moment. Like, I'm not on my phone thinking about taking a selfie, like, No, ever. we never, we don't take pictures. I'm a very bad social media influencer We keep in going, going back way. to both of our weddings for, like, photos exactly. we eat, and it was very outdated. Your bachelorette, yep. great photos yep. from your bachelorette. Yep. But no, I think that's telling, though. When you're caught yeah. up in the moment, you don't feel like you have to capture the moment, where you can just be right. with each other. So you really think that tape's gonna work? Where does the chimney go, Michael, since you're the expert on this? Oh, I've been demoted. Is that okay? Does it look right? Where a fireplace would be, Amy. Oh my God. <laughs> no, I think a good thing to friendship too is you don't compare. You know? A hundred percent. There's I'm not no sitting comparison. Here thinking, I wish I had her house. I'm recognizing that my house has some value to itself. Like it has a lot of air, you know? <laughs> Just moving my house. Look, we're further away, but we're still as close. <laughs> exactly. You know? And I also think even when we did live in the same state, mm -hmm. which we still do, we talk all the time over text. Right. Like, right. All the time. And uh, yeah, so I feel like it hasn't felt different, but I think it's also being intentional to check in. Yeah. Because sometimes we'll just text each other checking in. We, right. You know, it doesn't always have to be one of my deep life right. metaphorical questions. Which happened once a day at least. Uh, well, I feel like recently I'm texting you a lot about pregnancy. Yeah, you've been, um, you've been really checking in on like health, health. But sometimes I'll just be like mood check, mentally, emotionally, physically, 100%. like on a scale of one to ten, like where where we at. And if you say like six on one, I'll kind of dig in on that. Be like, okay, okay, what does that mean? Yeah, and I have to be prepared with my answer when I give a number on a scale of one to ten, because I know she's always going to have a follow up, which is why, right. like I said, I just sometimes have to like take a beat and actually think about it. And you know what? I think sometimes it is like really good questions like that that makes me think that you actually care. It's not, yeah, I think it sometimes. isn't just cell phone volleyball. I, she really genuinely wants to know the answers to these questions. I'm not the wordsmith she is, but I continue to try to find ways to be as prolific in my in, in, inquiries of you. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't happen very often where we won't talk for over 24 or 48 hours. Like it's a it's yeah, an like anomaly. Even when you go out, like when you were in Italy, we still find ways. Right. But I I'm not ever concerned like if, oh, oh, oh if, you had a gumdrop hole. Hmm. Oh shoot. <laughs> Let me just fix that. It's the beginning of the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sign. I've That's seen this sign. happen before. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm worried that, oh, if I haven't touched base with Sarah, then our friendship is in danger. Or like I have to do this or like the quality isn't gonna be there. And that's the most important thing to me because I think you should absolutely make an effort in your friendships, but it's not like something where it's a homework assignment. 
Like well, it's effortless, no... but we're reaching out because we genuinely want to. Well, and I also think there's no um, fear because have you, you've had friendships, I'm sure, where it's like you're afraid to maybe say something, or if I tell them this, what will they think of me for that? Yeah. Or like there have been times I've had to text you things that like I'm not excited to share, yeah. but I'm never worried about what your response is going to be. Yeah. And there have been times where I've had to do that with other people where I'm like bracing for their name to come back up on my phone. Okay. <laughs> Sure. You want you want me to just take your house for a sec? I don't even have enough icing on it. It's not even that like festive. Are you are you trying to hail it, it's on with, my <laughs> house? It's withstanding so much. <laughs> Wait, did you answer what you think the most important part of friendship is? Well, that's a good question, Sarah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I will agree with you about honesty, and I think no judgment is like really huge. It's really huge because that's very hard. I was gonna to say, do. why do you think both of those things are hard? Because I think. A lot of people struggle with being honest in friendships, and I think a lot of people, judgment I think sometimes is so unintentional. A thousand it's like a reflex. Like a lot of people might be watching this video right now judging my house, and I want to say to all of you, you are welcome to come over. <laughs> I will open my doors to you, and there's plenty of room. I think judgment and honesty are really hard because people haven't been taught not to do it. Especially women. We, especially women, yeah. and, and all you see anywhere is highlight reels and lies and ruse and mm -hmm. you know however you were brought up that's how you were taught to be and and you think you're doing the right thing by not saying something to someone's face but then when everybody in the family talks about it behind the back you think it's the right thing to do because everyone's doing it but it's right. actually not and I, I genuinely think people just don't realize the nature of being a good human sometimes that they're not, and it's not because they're vindictive, it's just right. they're used to conducting themselves a certain way around certain groups of people, which is why we talk about, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Jim Rohn's quote that I absolutely love, it's just like, who are those five people and how much are they impacting you? on how much you, you know, act and talk and 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 pursue whatever it is that you do. It's beautiful. I love your house. It. See, I'm celebrating your home mm -hmm. as much as I'm wishing I had insurance on mine. <laughs> um, I feel like you're absolutely right. I think you have to take stock of that because good and bad. Like there are times I leave a coffee with somebody, I'm like, I don't like how that felt. Like I don't mm -hmm. like how I then go home and how I am with my husband because I'm like, oh, that brought out an energy in me I don't love. Versus other people. You know people that feeling when you go out with someone and you're like, oh, we should do this again. And, and you leave you and you're like, I'm not doing date, that again. You know? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and then you don't. Like, you're like, I'm not getting out of my planner, but you text me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas, like, with you, I'm like, okay, but seriously, like, can we put it on the calendar now? Like, yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. Like, you know, like, we actually, I will say, at mm -hmm. the beginning of 2021, we committed to Thursday night BFF hangouts. Most of them ended up being virtual, which is not surprising whatsoever. But I'm very proud of us. We stuck to it. It wasn't every single week. Yeah. We made it work. Today's a Thursday. Yeah, this, <laughs> see, look at us. By the way, if you don't know the phrase BFF chat, I didn't even say this at the beginning, Sarah has been on the podcast a lot on detail therapy and we call it BFF chat and we just have a moment on the podcast. I just wanna prep you that after this video, you will probably be getting a lot of comments for people asking for like my home decor advice. And um, I just, I'm here for it. Yeah. You know, if yeah. they need tips. We uh, may need to rename the video so I that it is um, like, Sarah's gingerbread home decor. I'm, I'm just saying, like, tip. I could get my real estate license in gingerbread real estate. Okay, so what do you think has been the most important thing that we do to continue to maintain a healthy friendship? In adulthood, when you you've got you've got a child, I've got one on the way. You've got another one on the way. Mm -hmm. There's always busy. There's always something to yes. do, and you can easily chalk that up in any case about anything. But if you're actually trying to maintain a relationship with someone, the priority is there. Like I'm never too busy to figure out how we're going to connect regularly. And you know, it's interesting for both of us. We are people with high expectations of ourselves. Mm. We hold ourselves to very high standards, mm -hmm. but one thing that we've never done is we don't do that to each other. Like, yeah. if you had to cancel, or if you couldn't do something, or if something had to pivot, I've never held a grudge. I've never been, but like, if I did that to myself, I'd be mad at Sarah for weeks. Like, yeah. so I think, which is rare, because I think I have other friendships where I don't mean to, but I set expectations. Because, oh my gosh, how many friends do you have that you're like, I'm not even sure how much I like them, and yet, 
This video is taking a turn. No, 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 no. I, let's be honest. Like, the, you have those friends that you're like annoyed with sometimes. They don't always like meet your expectations, and that's unhealthy relationship with expectations. Yep, yep. And then the second they cancel on you, oh my gosh, like you're not gonna forget that. You know when you're keeping score with someone yes. that you the the foundation is shaky. I just had an epiphany. Okay, go. I just realized the reason we have never had expectations for each other Go. is because literally the night we met, I never had an expectation we'd be friends. <laughs> Same. Like, there you go. I feel like expectations were never even an option because we were like, well, okay, bye. <laughs> Whatever. And so it wasn't there. Where in other situations when you're meeting someone for the first time or you're like, I want to have coffee with that person or I'm going to become friends with that person, you le expectations are set. The ground yeah. is laid. Like, it's there. And we literally met in a situation where both of us walked away probably being like, we're never gonna meet again. Cool, that person was interesting, but whatever. But it never even crossed my radar that we'd be friends. I feel like I deserve that. No, but like it's not I, a dig. I, I, like, no, I know, I feel like, like I deserve that because I genuinely was so concerned about like, for a long time, like you kept calling me your best friend and I was like, I just okay, don't believe you. Okay, you're making it sound like I'm a stage five clinger that I did that like right away. Okay, you I are waited at least till we hung out a few times clinger. and I assessed the fact, okay, again, we're starting to, Show off. When I do that to the house, I'm pelting it to fall down. Yes, you, you do are. That it's to the totally house. different. If I wanted that house to come down, I would be using some of these ornaments. But I'm a good friend. I'm supporting that your house is still standing. Okay. So I think it's the no expectations and the no judgment that yeah. you know we've 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 like told I can each other. Say some I crazy have things. never judged you. I know, and we've done some crazy things. Yeah. You, you took me to Scotland. That is a good point. Yeah. That is a huge indication that you like someone. If you travel with somebody mm -hmm. internationally or for a long period of time, and you're me, and you are not sick of them. However, you're lucky I'm still your friend, because you remember what you said to me right when we were taking off? No, no, we were taking off. When, when literally, when, I got to your house to pick you up. Like, got in the car, driving to the airport. She just looks at me, and she goes, so, have you ever seen the movie Taken? Hi, thought this was gonna be a fun trip. <laughs> um, so literally, we survived that trip. We did, we survived, we were not taken. But the fact that she, you ended up making me a photo album book of our trip and it was called Taken, the prequel. I mean, how could it not? How and could it I not? It was just perfect. The only thing perfect. is we didn't run into Liam. Speech. I'd like to close this out with this gorgeous, Gingerbread home that we made that together. That we made, honestly, it was a joint effort. I, if I didn't have the positive, amazing energy from mm -hmm. you, my best friend, mm -hmm. who I appreciate mm -hmm. more than anything in the world, I did also tell you how to do it. And you told me how to do it. I wouldn't have had such a beautiful gingerbread house. You're welcome. Right I'm, here. I'm an this. instructor. Yeah. Not a builder. Yeah. Really fun and exciting news. Uh, Sarah is not a professional gingerbread house maker. Shh. But what she is very good at is writing, which is something that we share, we have in common. Mm -hmm. I'm not as natural of a writer, it's just something I happen to do. But we thought it'd be really fun to not just be BFFs and not just be pregnant at the same time, but Let's we're- Let's do more. We're gonna do more, because <laughs> we're ambitious and we have all kinds of extra we time. so much downtime. <laughs> Sarah and I have written a book together. It turned out way better than my gingerbread house. <laughs> it turned out, uh, don't judge the gingerbread houses. By Maybe this cover. one. Maybe this one. But but we have a very, very special edition mm -hmm. of Good Morning, Good Life coming out in 2022. Many and there is things. going to be more details coming very soon. But meet my co-author and best friend, Sarah Hello. Mitchell McCain. We're very, very excited to share this with you finally, because it's something we've been working on for quite some time. Okay, that was so much fun. I kind of predicted it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Told you I wouldn't withstand it, but you really don't need more than one house. You're right, we can just live in this house together. Let me know I'm moving out in. Okay, yeah. I will, I'll mm -hmm. tell him. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. Remember, subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love. Oh, Socially distancing, of course. Whoops. And go after the life you want. Cheers. The house you want. Cheers to our Sparkling, non-alcoholic. Into our home. magic. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Out of solidarity of my friendship with Sarah and um, the train wreck of a home that she tried to put together tonight, I am not being coerced into completely destroying my first ever perfect, first ever and perfect gingerbread house. I in no way asked for this. Right. Nor expected it. Uh huh. So I feel as I sit in shambles. Yeah. I feel appreciative. Yeah.
that again. No expectations. No expectations. No judgment. Hands up. Hey, I'm not going near Sarah it. Sarah doesn't want to get canceled for my uh, gingerbread house coming down. And also, I just think if I come any closer, it'll fall down on its own. <laughs> so there you go.